If you're servicing the brakes or suspension on any Tesla model, you do not need fancy orange gloves or insulated tools. The brake system on the vehicle uses the 12 volt low voltage electrical system and not the 400 volt system. Still, it's always a good practice to disconnect the 12 volt battery system if you must remove a caliper or even replace a brake hose. In order to disconnect the 12 volt power system on any Tesla model, you must access the frunk or the front trunk. And before you disconnect the 12 volt battery system, there are things you need to do. First, roll down the driver's side window. Why? Well, the upper channel is in the roof rail. When the door is open, an electric motor brings down the window slightly to clear the lip of the glass. If the power is disconnected first, well, you can't lower the window and the door will not open or close. This could result in shattering the glass even. This goes for other doors and other models as well. In addition, this practice prevents you from getting locked out of the car. Second, use the touchscreen to disconnect the power and disengage the parking brake. If you can't find the setting in the menu, put the car into tow mode or jacking mode. This will disengage the air suspension and the parking brake. It is now safe to disconnect the battery in the frunk. The battery, well, it's located under the access panel underneath the front cowl. On some Model S's made after April 10th, 2016, you will have to remove a portion of the HEPA cabin air filter to access the battery. Disconnect the negative battery cable first. On the passenger side of the frunk, you will see a panel with an icon of a set of side cutters. Under the panel is the first responder's loop. Disconnect it at the connector. No need to cut it. Most of the underside of the Model S is a huge battery. When you're lifting the vehicle, make sure you have the proper lift adapters. If they do slip off or they contact the battery, the battery is damaged. The Model S has rails next to the skirt designed for lifting the vehicle. Same with the Model Y and the Model 3. Be sure the lifter using contacts only the points on the rails as recommended by Tesla. Some Tesla models, well, they have an optional air suspension package. The air struts automatically self-level even when the power's off. So the system needs to be disabled before you can lift the vehicle. You can put the vehicle into jacking mode as described using the settings of the menu on the touchscreen. The other benefit of turning these off is you're turning off the cameras on the vehicle so you're not being recorded while you're working on the vehicle. The front brakes on a Tesla, well, they can be either floating or opposed piston calipers like the Brembo package, depending on what options were selected. The Tesla Model S is vulnerable to wear and corrosion that can occur on vehicles with internal combustion engine but the damage can be even more severe because the regenerative braking system might not allow the brakes to reach normal operating temperature. The rear brakes can use four piston calipers with a separate parking brake or a single piston caliper with an integrated electric motor that applies the parking brake. For models with the separate parking brake caliper, when the car is put into tow mode, the caliper will retract enough to remove the caliper and rotor. The parking brake caliper self-centers over the brake rotor. If the slide pins and boots are damaged, well, the parking brake might not be able to hold the vehicle on a grade when parked. Once the brakes are serviced, you can reconnect the battery. From the screen, you can adjust the rear calipers using the service mode. Should you go for a test drive? Yes! Even if the majority of the braking is performed by regenerative braking, well, hard stops and low speed stops are still performed by the hydraulic brakes. Performing a test drive can confirm the brakes are working and are quiet. I'm Andrew Markell coming to you from the Bempac EV Garage Studio at Babcox Media. Thanks for watching.